everyone. My name is Karina Clark, and I'm here to talk about dog breed discrimination. There is a list where many dog breeds are on. People have misjudged these breeds and will continue doing so. They are also depicting them as being too dangerous. It has gotten to the point where there are many insurance companies that will refuse people for having these breeds. And sometimes people will have to make the difficult decisions of either giving up their home or their beloved pet. The discrimination for dog breeds started in the 80s. It was first the breed Pitbull. They said that they were bred for just fighting, but they were also bred to take down bulls in the past. Then they turned over to German Shepherds, who were bred as guard dogs and now are found in the police force and military. Then it came to Rottweilers. They were bred as herding dogs, later used to pull carriages for butchers, and are now used for at-home defense. People still accuse these breed bigger breeds for attacking people, but it is typically how the dogs were raised and trained by their current and or previous owners. You can't judge how dangerous a dog breed is and then just blacklist them because there are so many factors that come into play. Every dog can be a dangerous dog no matter the size or the breed. Saying that one dog breed is dangerous because of it being a certain breed is wrong. You can't always tell if a dog is the breed that you're thinking of. For example, there have been German Shepherds that look like wolves or wolf dogs. People have judged that. The same can be also said about the Shiba Inu. It has been mistaken as a fox many times, but it is not a fox. All dogs can be good dogs and have good temperaments, but the same can be said that all dogs can have bad temperaments. It really depends on how they were raised and trained. There are two problems that come up with this topic. The first problem is that there are many insurance companies that have reject and refuse people that have a dog that is on the black list. The other problem that came up is the stigma that these breeds face from other people and people will always judge these breeds but have not judged the owners for taking care or training that breed. People will believe that these breeds end up in the shelters more often assuming that people are giving them up for their safety. In reality, most people will give up these breeds because their insurance refuses to cover for a just in case this animal bites someone. Another reason is that many rental places refuse to accept these breeds also. So the dog owners are stuck between either try and look for a different place and hope that they can get one, or they have to give up their beloved pet. And many times it is the latter. Many shelters get so overcrowded that there are times where these dogs will have to be euthanized because there is no room for them. People will argue that bigger dogs will be more dangerous and more aggressive depending on the breed, saying that the history of that breed is and people will try using that. There are many solutions to this problem. One, we can show people that these dogs are good for different people. There are some people like myself that gets nervous around smaller dogs because I have been bitten multiple times by smaller dogs in the past. But the same can be also said about those around bigger dogs and them being nervous. Many people have never interacted with dogs before, thus are afraid of them because they cannot predict what a dog will do or is warning the person not to do. It is a simple solution, and that solution is teaching people what to do and what not to do when they meet a dog that they don't know. If their owner is not nearby, there was a study that was done with young children. They divided a class of kids into three groups. Group one was taught how to interact with dogs that they don't know. Group two was taught to fear dogs. And group three was not taught how to interact with dogs. After that, the kids saw a dog in the park and they were put to the test. Group one, they weren't bitten by the dog and were able to pet it. Group two, they were too scared to go even near it. And group three, they were bitten more often because the kids ignored the body language that the dog was showing because they were never taught it. Solution two, like said before, any dog can be loving and good along with vice versa. 
It is all how the dog is brought up and trained. Here are some examples. Chihuahuas. There can be an owner that doesn't introduce the dog to new people or new environments, thus having a higher chance of being aggressive and mean along with biting other people and will attack them more often. Where there can be another owner of the same chihuahua and of the same breed who does the complete opposite. They introduce the dog to new people and new surroundings early on and don't overprotect that dog. Thus, it has a higher chance of not attacking people, not being aggressive, or being mean or scared of its surroundings. The same can be said about Rottweilers and pit bulls. They are often trained for at-home defense, but there are some people that can take it to an extreme where they train the dogs to attack anyone and everyone that is not family or the trainer. Thus, they become mean, aggressive, and will attack people. But the same can be said on the other side too. They can still be trained for at-home defense, but within reason. I had a grandfather who owned and trained Rottweilers. Him and my grandmother owned a farm in Utah. Their favorite Rottweiler was named Bear, and he was a good dog. He was also trained to protect the farm like any other Rottweiler that they've owned. But the difference is that he was still very loving. When my grandparents would have one of my cousins over, when she was a baby, they would set her down for a nap, and he would just stare at her. And anytime she moved, he would bark at them, letting them know, hey, she moved. Even if she was jolting on her sleep, he would still sit there and watch her, watch her attentively. He was a good dog and really loved by the family, and he loved them too. There are many things that we can do to help these dogs, but we need to address the pr first problem, which is to better train these dogs, and that starts with the owners and breeders. Then, we need to have insurance companies either stop breed-specific discrimination or have all dogs labeled for just in case. The dog bites someone. We should also teach young people how to interact with different dogs so that they know how to handle a situation with one. Thank you. Have a nice day.